Many are now aware, thanks to international press coverage of an official study into UFOs by the US Pentagon. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program AATIP, was a secret investigation into unknown aerial phenomena and was funded by the United States government and first made public on December 16, 2017. We have learnt that AATIP ran from 2007 to 2012 with a funding of $22 million. The program began in the United States Defense Intelligence Agency, the DIA. Although the official AATIP program has now come to an end and a number of interested professionals have founded a non-profit organization called To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science, or better known as the TTSA. The program was initiated by U.S. Senator Harry Reid with the help of Nevada businessman and governmental contractor Robert Beglow and the late Senators Ted Stevens and Daniel Inouye. During an interview, Senator Reid said, I think it's one of the good things I did in my congressional service. I've done something that no one has done before. It is alleged that the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Programme has generated a 490-page report that documents UFO sightings from around the world from several decades. However, at this time, the report has not been released to the general public. A gentleman known as Louis Elizondo claims he headed the AATIP programme before resigning from the Pentagon duties in October 2017, allegedly in protest of government secrecy and opposition to the investigation program, stating in his resignation letter to US Defence Secretary James Mattis that the AATIP program was for some reason not being taken seriously. The United States Department of Defense has stated that in 2012, the program was terminated. However, the reason for the termination remains unclear. We don't really know why there does seem to be some type of confusion over Luis Elizondo's involvement in ATIP, for an example. The Pentagon spokesman, Christopher Sherwood, recently stated the following. Mr. Elizondo had no responsibilities with regard to the AATIP program, while he worked in OUSDI, the Office of Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, up until the time he resigned in 2017. Benjamin Radford wrote in Skeptical Inquirer that among what little information has been released by the program are several short videos of military jets encountering something they couldn't identify. The release of the three videos, showing what looks like to be US military encounters with unknown aerial phenomena, have been referred to as the Tic Tac UFO, Go Fast, and Gimbal. In January of 2019, a complete list of projects that were funded by the program became available. Of the 37 listed studies, a few stand out. Traversable Wormholes, Stargates, and Negative Energy was led by Eric W. Davis of EarthTech International Incorporated which was founded by Harold Putoff, who was formerly involved in Project Stargate. Another study program called Invisibility Cloaking was headed by German scientist Ulf Leonhardt, a professor at the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel. And also Warp Drive, Dark Energy, and the manipulation of extra dimensions was attributed to the theoretical physicist Richard Obozi, director of the non-profit Icarus Interstellar. It's interesting to point out that these projects are likely to involve the study and the correlation between positive magnetic anomalies and UFOs, as well as a hyper-evasiveness of the phenomenon and their capabilities of invisibility, maneuverability and materialization into our reality. Louis Elizondo has announced his involvement in founding an aerospace, science, paranormal and entertainment company called to the Stars Academy for Arts and Science. Former Deputy Assistant Director of Defense for Intelligence Christopher Mellon is also involved in TTSA, along with co-founder Tom DeLonghi, musician from the group Blink 182, and several others. AATIP have released information in regards to their studies into the five observables. Project Doorway, a five-year scientific study program has also released information in regards to their five evidential conclusions. AATIP lists their five observables as anti-gravity lift, 
sudden and instantaneous acceleration, hypersonic velocities without signatures, low observability or cloaking, and transmedium travel. Project Doorway, ran by researchers Barry Fitzgerald and Steve Mira, have concluded their findings in phase one of their studies. The five evidential conclusions are that the phenomenon predates historical documentation, that there are paranormal and metaphysical attributes to many UFOs, that they can demonstrate a conscious connection with the observers, can generate infrasonic frequencies, and are utilizing key locations as X points or better known as positive magnetic anomalies. Also associated with the TTSA is the ADAM Research Project, Acquisition and Data Analysis of Materials. This project is described as the following on the ADAM Project TTSA website. The project is an academic research program focused on exotic materials for technology innovation and will focus on the collection and scientific evaluation of material samples obtained through reliable reports of advanced aerospace vehicles of unknown origin. Bigelow Aerospace, part of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program AATIP, reportedly modified buildings held in Las Vegas for the storage of metal alloys and other materials that former Department of Defense DOD intelligence officer Louis Elizondo and program contractors claimed were recovered from unidentified aerial phenomena. Elizondo is currently employed as TTSA's Director of Global Security and Special Programs. The project has, in part, been created to examine those anomalous materials if they exist. As soon as TTS Academy is notified that materials are available, a thorough effort will be made to document their origin and credibility, followed by the establishment of chain of custody procedures and ownership protocols, the statement said. In addition to reviewing the materials for their potential significance as evidence of exotic origin, the analysis will evaluate materials for such characteristics as exceptional strength, lightweight build, and any unusual advanced properties that potentially could contribute to the development of exciting new technologies in the future. Current results of suspected UFO metamaterial analysis shows that some consist of 29 to 80 layers made up of microns of dark bismuth, silver magnesium, zinc alloys, and numerous other identifiable materials. Some of the pieces are tapered in shape with curvature, all alloys used can be found here on Earth. However, some elements have been identified as obscure purities. These materials are atomically aligned and scientists have theorized that the manufacturer of such materials may have been carried out in a weightless environment and that the metal alloys were somehow created in a way that is similar to 3D printing and act as superconductors. The spectroscopy revealed the perfect processing of the metamaterial in precise layers. Radiating them in light in the terahertz frequency range can cause them to reduce their weight and resonate a harmonic frequency. Such metamaterials are purposely manufactured, altering the isotopic levels. Such isotopic levels within the metamaterials are not a match with terrestrial isotopic levels of these same alloys, Thus, the manufacture process of the metamaterials may be altering their isotopic signatures. It is also theorized that such metamaterials can produce anti-gravity, lift and even invisibility. Over the last few months, there have been statements saying that 3D metal printing is advanced technology and that we cannot yet create this. These statements are inaccurate. In fact, not only are scientists at Duke University in the UK creating metamaterials, but they're also applying terahertz light frequencies to them and causing some unusual responses to take place, which could lead the way to new research. Also, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory have also been manufacturing 3D metal printing parts for quite a long time. It's interesting to point out results of experiments carried out on monatomic powder. When applying a terahertz light frequency to the powder, approximately 43% of it seemingly disappears. However, restriction was felt when pushing a pencil through it, thus the powder was there, yet not in the visible spectrum. 
Scientists theorize that some of the powder was somehow phasing to another reality temporarily until the light source was removed and the powder returned. The suspected frequency of light applied is that of around 450 to 460 terahertz, the same frequency of light that is produced by our sun at sunset and sunrise, that deep amber color. Also, experiments carried out on suspected UFO metamaterials allegedly show that when applying a particular light frequency, the metamaterials reduce weight and levitate at the same time as producing a frequency of sound within the harmonic range. In 2007, Bjorn Gittel Haag, an assistant professor at the Ostford University College in Holden, Norway, produced a fascinating document entitled Optical Spectrum Analysis of the Hesteland Phenomenon. The Hesteland Phenomena seemingly produces a form of ionized gas around itself with dominant chemical elements, suggesting a burning process, and though they are regularly misidentified as natural forms of light phenomena, they have been seen to act in a way suggesting they are somehow conscious or act with intelligence. The location of Hesteland, Norway, lies within a positive magnetic anomaly, and it is suspected that other varied phenomena has been reported there. Professor Haig also identified that the unidentified aerial phenomenon seen throughout the Hasdalen Valley emit a light frequency in the terahertz frequency range and are often described as amber coloured. Looking at this phenomenon from an investigatory point, it is important to recognise a possible connection between the phenomenon and the light frequency of terahertz, be it at Hessel Delan, monatomic powder experiments, and UFO metamaterials. When researching the Pentagon program AATIP, you quickly discover that another program known as AAWSAP, Advanced Aerospace Weapons System Application Program, seemingly are one of the same. AATIP and TTSA first became known through a series of media postings in regard to unusual flying craft in and around 150 miles from the San Diego, Mexican shoreline the first of which has become known as the Tic Tac UFO. Apart from forward-facing infrared film of this craft captured by the US Navy being released, there is also an alleged photograph of the Tic Tac UFO released by TTSA during a public seminar. However, this photograph was recognized immediately by investigators at MAPIT, Manchester's Aerial Phenomena Investigation Team based in the UK. The photograph was from one of their investigations carried out in Eccles, Manchester in 2005. Prior to case conclusion, a series of photographs was released onto the internet, featured on the Jeff Rent Sightings radio show website. This was the only location the photographs were featured on the internet. In December 2017, the media announced that TTSA conducted a seminar in regard to the Tic Tac UFO incident where a photograph was shown. The photograph was clearly nothing to do with the Tic Tac UFO, but of a party balloon in the shape of a number one. The very same one that was taken over Eccles, Manchester from 2005. There has been no explanation from the TTSA how this photograph became attached to the Tic Tac UFO incident, nor an explanation to where it came from, how was it submitted, and most importantly, why was the photograph manipulated? Had been adjusted to make to make it look like the blue sky, to look like the, the sea, as if the photograph was taken from above, looking down on the object. Though there was no mention or text saying that the photograph was the Tic Tac UFO, it was shown in conjunction to the incident. This is a clever way of misleading the public. It's important to be aware of such psychological tactics where purpose safeguards are created so not to accuse of purposely misleading the public. Tom DeLong has also made a number of inaccurate statements, such as claiming a known hoaxed video of a TR-3B triangular craft over France to be authentic. Either Tom made a silly mistake, or again, this was a purpose mislead. Whatever the reason, having Tom speak on behalf of TTSA could seemingly be dangerous. In June and July of 2019, TTSA was involved with bringing a six-part TV show to our television screens. 
Numerous well-known researchers have stated that there seemed to be an underlying tone throughout the show. This came in the form of suggestions that the mysterious crafts witnessed by pilots represented the profound phenomenon of true UFO activity. However, everything about these incidents points to the strange crafts being more likely our own advanced technology being flown in a location that may be the new Area 51. The location being well out of sight from passing observers 150 miles out at sea in a location that does not have civilian aircraft flying over and not many ships passing through. It is, of course, a special zone for, for United States naval uh, services to conduct special tests and experiments. This location is known as a training zone, and coincidentally, most, if not all, of these incidents occurred straight after new high-tech radar systems had been fitted to the U.S. Navy ships. This seems a perfect opportunity to fly exotic aircraft in the vicinity and to test the new installations of high-tech equipment. During the six-part TTSA series known as Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation, Louis Elizonde claimed that the location around Guadalupe Island was situated in a positive magnetic anomaly and viewers were shown an image. This image represents inaccurate information yet again showing positive magnetic anomalies around a small island off the coast of Mexico where in fact there are none. It would seem that the idea of this true UFO phenomena was being pressed, when in fact the UFOs could very well be just experimental advanced technology that we currently have. If this be the case, then researchers should be asking the question why? One of the most current forms of research undertaken by Barry and Donna Fitzgerald of Project Doorway is the studies of magnetics and bacteria. They have surmised that a positive magnetic charge can kill bacteria. There are a number of research facilities that are conducting experiments and discovering interesting results. Also, a number of hospitals throughout Europe are now using positive magnetically charged door frames on recovery wards, so to make the location bacterial safe zones. It has been suggested that the positive charge assists with killing bacteria and not allowing as much to pass the magnetic perimeter. It is true that our bodies do require magnetic energy, however certain fields can help deplete bacteria in given locations. If such a phenomena utilizes locations of positive magnetics, then such locations may act as a bacterial safe zone. If this is the case, we have to assume that the process of utilizing these locations may be a safety protocol, just as a surgeon would clean themselves before entering and after leaving an environment where bacteria is present. In 2015, researchers from the Indian Institute of Science discovered a way to kill bacteria using pulsed magnetic fields. They conducted preliminary trials on infectious bacteria and found that more than half of the bacteria was eliminated when exposed to magnetic fields. Also, scientists at Singapore's Nanyang Technological University have created a magnetic-like coating that traps and destroys 99% of the bacteria and fungi that it encounters. The antibacterial coating has been shown to be effective against superbugs. This research could lead to new wound treatments and even be used to target bacterial infections inside the body without the use of conventional antibiotics. The MMS project, Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission, run by NASA, investigates how the Sun's and Earth's magnetic fields connect and disconnect, explosively transferring energy from one to the other in a process that is called magnetic reconnection. Four identical instrumented spacecraft measure plasmas, fields and particles in a near equatorial orbit that have frequently encountered reconnection in action. The MMS reveals for the first time the small-scale three-dimensional structure and dynamics of the elusively thin and fast-moving electron diffusion region better known as portals. It does this in key reconnection regions near Earth where the most energetic events originate. Rumours have circulated that the MMS mission is not revealing much data and that one of the four satellites was 
supposedly flown into a stable electron diffusion region, only to appear 93 million kilometers away near our sun. Now, of course, attempting to find details about this is next to impossible. But theoretically, numerous researchers believe that flying a satellite into an electron diffusion region would be likely part of the mission and would be there to gather data. It's something likely to be done. Discovered in numerous official documents, the United States Secretary of Navy is listed as the assignee on several radical aviation technologies patented by an aerospace engineer working at the Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division, NORCAD, headquarters in Paxtuant River, Maryland. One of those patents describes a hybrid aerospace underwater craft claimed to be capable of extraordinary feats of speed and maneuverability in air, water, and outer space due to a revolutionary electromagnetic propulsion system method. If you recall, transmedium travel has been listed as one of the five observables by ATIP. The patent is highly complex and describes methods of reducing the mass of an aircraft using various techniques, including the generation of gravity waves, which were first detected in 2016 after being produced when two black holes collided. Although the US Navy applied for the patent in 2016 and was granted in 2018, it doesn't necessarily mean the craft has been built and tested. However, a number of ex-employees of the United States Navy have stated if they've submitted the patent, then that means they already have it. It is known that a number of patents on new advanced drones were submitted long after they had been designed and test flown. Details of AATIP were first released in 2017, including reports of a sighting made by fighter pilots from the USS Nimitz. These pilots saw a huge patch of churning, turbulent waters the size of a Boeing 737, suggesting something was beneath the surface of the sea as well as a tic-tac-shaped aircraft which zoomed off at almost impossibly high speeds. Could it be that the United States government are test-flying exotic experimental aircraft out at sea, 150 miles off the Mexican coastline, in a location that is likely a non-commercial fly zone and shipping zone where the US Navy conduct their own tests? After all, pilots that witnessed these objects were surprised to find that the data recordings of these encounters were lost or removed, and that no high-ranking official did anything with the information, and that they were not even told not to talk about their experience. The likely reason being, as soon as you say, don't talk about it, it gives the incident some credence and secrecy. Were such encounters simply brushed under the rug? Very possible as the whole incident could have simply been a test of a newly installed radar systems on the naval ships. Researcher and author Nick Pope stated, A hybrid craft, capable of flying both in the air and underwater, is uncannily similar to what was reported in the USS Nimitz incident from 2004. There was a similar incident of a UFO flying underwater in Puerto Rico in 2013. The possible connection between the USS Nimitz incident and this patent is intriguing, and it's interesting that the US Navy seems to be the link here. In the latest patent, author Salvadori Cesar Pais mentions Harold Putoff, a key figure in the AATIP, who commissioned the 37 papers exploring exotic technologies, which were then used by defense intelligence agencies during briefings filed with the US Congress. Whatever these strange craft represent, it's feasible to consider that we do have some incredible technologies and that the general public and military aircraft pilots are not aware of. And why should they be, after all? Let us not underestimate human capability. It's highly possible that not only do our skies reveal secret exotic aircraft capable of transmedium travel, but also very real and ancient phenomenon as well that continues to baffle scientists a phenomenon that we refer to as the real UFOs.